Hello, Brett Etheridge here, founder of Dominate Test Prep, a leading provider of online courses for the GMAT and the GRE. And I'm excited to share this video with you about factorials. You know, it's a question that I've been getting a lot recently, factorials and questions involving dividing factorials and how that works. And this is a more advanced question that you're gonna see me go through. A quick caveat, it may not look like some of the other videos you may have seen of mine, and that's because this is actually excerpted from a live office hours session that I recently hosted. You know, I have several different course packages and the Platinum package includes a live interactive online session. And this is actually the first time I've ever shared one because students pay extra for the opportunity to participate in those sessions. And, and I like to try to keep those private, but I did feel like this particular question did a really good job of addressing some of the key understandings and the key aspects of factorials that a lot of students, including perhaps you, have had for me recently. So that's the reason I'm sharing it. I hope you get a lot out of it. I encourage you to head over to dominatetestprep.com to check out all of our courses, including our platinum packages. Uh, but you know, without further ado, go ahead and kind of eavesdrop in on us as we cover this sample question, and then you'll hear me talk through it as well. So enjoy. So I'm going to actually go back to the whiteboard here in a minute, but you can look at the question here. It says the expression n factorial, n so n with an exclamation point, they're kind of being nice to us by actually giving us the definition, but we know that's a factorial. n factorial is defined as the product of all the integers from one until n. So you know, we see this in combinatorics, uh, permutations, combinations, where five factorial, for example, is one times two times three times four times five. So multiplying all the integers uh, sequentially from one up until whatever the number is. All right. So that's just kind of background. And then the question itself is, if P is the product of integers from 100 through 299, so not quite 299 factorial, right? Because that would include the numbers one all the way up until 99. So we said we're starting at 100. I'm gonna multiply that 101, 102, 103, all the way up until 299. And then Q is the product of the integers from 200 to 299. Which of the following is equal to P over Q? And then you have a bunch of answer choices. So let me go ahead and stop sharing that and I will try to recreate it on the whiteboard. All right, so this is what we have going on here. We have P equaling all of the integers, the product of the integers from 100 through 299. So that's 100 times 101 times 102 times 103 times et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to 297 times 298 times 299. <clears throat> all right, and Q, is the same thing except we're gonna start at 200 instead. So we're gonna have 200 times 201 times 202, 202, et cetera, all the way up to 297, 298 <clears throat> times 299. All right, so they end at the same place. And the question is, what is P over Q? What is that equal? And we have those answer choices, which I'll go ahead and uh, 99 factorial, B is 199 factorial, C is 199 factorial or 99 factorial, D is 299 factorial over 99 factorial, and E is 299 factorial over 199 factorial. All right, so, and so Tapish, you were saying that you kind of did a wouldn't it be nice if, and, and that's a great way to go, right? Like what if you only were doing like P equals 10, 11, 12 to like 29, for example, <clears throat> and Q is 20, 21, 22, all the way up to 29. You know, that's still, that's a good, you know, that's a good way to think. Wouldn't it be nice if is a great kind of way to think. The problem is 
uh, those numbers still get really big as well, right? Um, so it's not like you're gonna multiply all of those out. Um, so maybe you just go like 10 to 19 and 20 to 19, but that doesn't make sense. So these numbers still get kind of too big for the wouldn't it be nice if approach. The main thing is just to kind of look at, and anytime you do factorials, right? So we saw this before, like what is uh, eight factorial over five factorial? What does that equal? Right, well that is just eight times seven times six times, ooh, look what happens. Five times four times three times two times one, but that's just the same as five factorial, right? So if I'm gonna do eight factorial over five factorial, as long as the denominator is smaller than the numerator, you're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff cancel out. So that's the wouldn't it be nice if understanding that might be helpful here, right? The numerator is bigger than the denominator, it includes everything in the denominator. In other words, the five factorial is included in the numerator, and this is all that's left, eight times seven times six. And that's what's going on here, isn't it? In the numerator, we have you know, 100 times 101 times a bunch of stuff, all the way up to, by the way, 199, 200, 201, 202, all the way up to 299, ooh, but look at that. This part right here is the entire denominator, right? Isn't that the whole denominator is 200, 201, 202, up to 299. So literally, the numerator, since it's bigger than the denominator, all of that part cancels. So really, the answer to the question is just, that, that part, the answer to the question, P over Q is 100 times 101 times 102, all the way up to 198, 199. That is your answer. And now we can look at the answer choices and see which of those is going to be the same thing, all right? And this might take a little bit of, uh, I don't know, creativity to kind of realize. Obviously, it's not 99 factorial. 99 factorial would be, you know, back here starting at 99 all the way down to 1, but that's not included. Likewise, 199 factorial, yes, we go up to 199 and go all the way down, but we don't go all the way back down to 1. We stop here at 100, so it's not B. And now how about some of these other ones? Like, why, why are they dividing out? stuff. Ah, well, that's because of what I just showed you up here. So this should be helpful for you to realize, um, like this, like answer choice E, for example, that's 299 dot, 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 all the way down to 199, all the way down to one. And then the 199 all the way down to one is in the denominator as well. So all that stuff cancels. So we're left with 200 you know, up to 299, but that's too big. We don't want that, right? We only go up to 199, so it's not E. Uh, I think it's pretty clear to see now that the correct answer would be answer choice C. Uh, in other words, by dividing out the 99 factorial, that's like the overlap in the numerator, 99 all the way down to one, which basically means it's 199 multiplied all the way down to 100, which is kind of all that's left in the numerator, if that makes sense. And the 99 factorial, the rest of that kind of cancels out, leaving just um, you know, 100 up to 199, which again is what we figured out. So, so what'd you think? Hopefully that helped you and made sense to you and you better understand factorials and how all of that works now. And like I said, I encourage you to head over to dominatetestprep.com, check out all of our course offerings, and hopefully you'll choose to be one of our platinum members so that we can do more of this type of thing and help you to dominate your test.